weeks ago on Tough Track, Gravedigger drove the world champion equalizer into the dirt. Last week, I discussed that David Morris drove equalizer to the scrap heap. This week, who will drive the equalizer?
Chapman is with Mopar Magic's Gary Wiggins. Gary Wiggins, driver of Mopar Magic, already unsuited, and he's tearing down the Mopar Magic machine. What seems to be the problem? Oh, uh, we messed up a training. We um, busted a sprag in the inside the training, so it'll never make it in the door again. So, it's, so we're going to back, you know, go back home and redo the transmission and all. How long will it take to get the machine back in running, top running condition? Oh, uh, not long, but basically we're going to go, we'll go ahead and pull the motor back out and everything. We're going to go back to the motor this week, so I figure I'll do the transmission and all too now. Just basically getting parts off and TCI and everything. You disappointed? Oh, yes, definitely. Problems for Mopar Magic, but at least he made a run. Marvin Smith and Wildhair never got off the starting line during qualifying. Chris has worked her way over to Marvin Smith. Marvin's doing a little work. A normally always smiling Marvin Smith. Not much to smile about now as he goes to the line on qualifications and had some distributor problems, I understand. Yeah, I broke the, uh, the uh, gear off into the uh, magneto in this thing. For some reason, it sure the pin right off and it wouldn't fire. It fired and just quit and it was it. I thought I'd get it running, but we couldn't get it to sit back in the right spot and get the pin in there good enough. So I guess I'm out for today. You said that this could have been some problems that, with the running of the machine over the past couple of weeks. You think that's it? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to send the Magneto back uh, airmail tonight on uh, air freight and get it looked at and hopefully get it back and have it ready for next weekend. Hopefully that was it. <laughs> Good luck, Mark. Thank you. What an incredible succession of stories. And that's not all. For the first time in the history of TNT Monster Truck Challenge Racing, a woman will drive a monster truck. That's Karen Pencil. She's at the control of the Thunder Ticket. Brought to you by Micro Machine, the most colossally collectible vehicles in the world. If it doesn't say Micro Machine, it's not the real thing. Back at the row at Oak Civic Center, Scott Douglas, Army Armstrong, Chris Chapman on tough track. Here's the way the first round will go. Fast qualifier, awesome, Kong gets a bye. Then Buffalo Tremor will take on the Liquidator Ford. It's Whiskey Business taking on Thunder Chicken with Harris Pencil making the run in the chicken. Mad Dog will come out against another Chevrolet, Bennett Clark Clydesdale. And wrapping up the first round, we'll see in action Steve Wilkie's USA 1 against the Equalizer with Mike Wine. Then Carolina Crusher meets the Grave Digger. Here's the Liquidator Ford and the Buffalo Tremor Chevrolet. puts away Bob Fisher and the liquidator Ford. Once again, Johnny K gets the win, and he may be a player today with a very, very powerful truck, the Buffalo Tremor. But we're about to make history on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. There you see it, the Thunder Chicken. Karen Pencil will become the first woman to drive a monster truck in TNT competition. A historic moment and to set the stage, Army Armstrong talked with Karen a little earlier today. We're going to listen to that interview right now. Sport of professional monster truck racing has always been dominated by men, but that may change right now as Karen Pencil will be the first young lady to actually compete for the world championship points. And at this minute, Karen, this has got to be a, kind of a spooky time for you. Yes, it is, Army. I'm pretty nervous right now. Well, you made some qualifying runs or practice runs in the truck a few minutes ago. A lot of the male drivers saw you and said, hey, she knows what she's doing. So the only problem seems to be in your mind right now. Everybody else realizes you can drive these trucks. I felt pretty good on my second trial run there, and uh, I'm going to go for it. I'll give them a race. Okay, now you're going to be driving the truck that's normally driven by Kid Rory. You know the truck is competitive. You know you've got a good vehicle underneath you. You know, could this be the start of a new profession for you? Could you be the first world champion lady in a monster truck division? Yeah. How's that? <laughs> I don't think it gets any more positive than that right now. All you girls out there, stay tuned. She could be the one that does it. I tell you what, though, Army, you can see she is just having a world of problems fighting that steering wheel. And that's not normal, Army. I got to wonder if there's not something wrong with the steering on the Thunder. Yeah, I believe there is, God. You're going to have to excuse the fun, but she's okay, having to go. manhandle that truck to get to the starting line. All right, she's going to get it staged, though. It looks like we're ready to go as Thunder Chicken and Karen Pencil will go into competition. And, you know, a lot of pressure right now in Ken Deppie and Whiskey Business. You know the rookie does not want to lose to the lady on her maiden voyage. Oh, well, you got two rookie drivers. Look at Debbie. He comes out of that whiskey thing. It's looking good. He's going to the next row. Oh, she's had a little bit of a problem, and Debbie does too. Man, this track is just a killer. Everybody's getting torn up. And Karen has come to the other side of the track. Let's watch the replay and see what happened here. Again, the front suspension is the weak link when he lands. Same as the equalizer here. Bam, it goes away. What they're doing, they're landing and hitting the brake at the same time, Scott. 
Well, Whiskey Business broke the front stabilizer bar, but Thunder Chicken was disqualified for coming all the way over in the other lane. So, you know, it's a situation where we're probably going to see another fast loser picked up. Neither of these trucks will likely be back. Watch her lean. Now, she's cute on this run, Army. Okay, yeah. Neither truck will be back. The front suspension is broken. When you're disqualified in this sport, you cannot come back as a quick loser. So, we lost two trucks out of one run. Army, appropriately, Chris Chapman has worked her way over to talk with Karen Pencil, and we'll get her feeling after her first run. I'm with Karen Pencil, who stepped into the Thunder Chicken as the first woman ever to challenge the TNT Monster Truck Challenge circuit. And she challenged it in a very definite way, stepping in with no steering. So I 
would love to be an operator in his hometown when that phone call comes through on Saturday night. He's had some spooky phone calls, but this one, I have no idea what you could have done different with the bounce of the truck was wrong or something. You look like you were just along for the ride. Well, I mean, uh, again, as we said, you know, after it happened there, uh, you have to be able to jam the throttle the floor, drive that front end out. Uh, the wall comes up awful fast, but I believe that I was at fault. And this fearful phone call to Mr. Jasmine Everett here, uh, the thing about Everett, I have a lot of respect for him. Um, he asked if we're all right, and, and if we're all right, can we put the truck back together? And if we can, let's run. That's the word from the USA One camp. The equalizer is another story. They also had to work feverishly to get it ready. Their driver quit, at least for today. Mike Wines now driving the equalizer. Earlier, Chris Chapman asked Mike about his new ride. Very exciting. He put on. Right here with Mike Wine, his first ride in the equalizer. What did it feel like? It was totally different. We have a leaf spring suspension underneath our truck. He has a coil spring suspension. But ours, you sit in it and the truck sits straight. It doesn't move until you land or bounce. This one here, you just turn the wheel or even going over cars, it just floats back and forth. It's a weird feeling to get used to. So you're going to come out a little bit harder next round? Yeah, next round. I'm used to it now. It's time to run it. Yeah, but we don't know how hard he can go, Army. We found out that there's no front drive staff for the Eagle Line. School prom, but you got to wear your buddy's best shoes if you're going to dance. You look great out there. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like I've never danced before in my life. I'm learning how to dance all over again. Our motor, we blew it up last weekend. We took two rods and tested and tried out through the old hands. Equalizer had trouble with their truck, worked on it all night long. Uh, he come up to me this morning. I had my truck all loaded up. I come just to watch the race. It's the only reason I even came. And he wanted to know if I'd be able to run it for him. And we're only running two-wheel drive, and I've never been in the truck in my life. It really feels weird, you know, at first, but I'm not going to let USA 1 or anybody intimidate me. I don't care what I drive. I run it hard, and I run it the best I can. Another of the walking wounded, Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger, will race with rear-wheel drive only as he takes on Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher. So while it's a wounded digger, he doesn't even get a break on the draw. He has to take on last week's winner. Uh, he's going up against a guy that he has the utmost respect for. You better respect this Carolina Crusher. He'll hammer you in a heartbeat. Crusher's building a new truck. They're getting ready to go outdoors. This can really help the Crusher. These guys kind of travel together. But does it bother Gary that Dennis has been wild lately and that he ran into Equalizer two weeks ago right here on this track? No, like I say, when that green light goes green, Another big win as he's trying to track Grave Digger down in the point. So this is a very important win for Gary Porter. And once again, Porter driving style, he goes to the air. Nobody else is doing it, but it's working for him. Just tracks taking you to one of the great cities in the world, deep in the heart of Dixie, Atlanta, Georgia. You look at the skyline, but we're about to take you inside the world-famous Omni for the TNT All-American Pulling Series. Today, it's those big multi-engine modified tractors, and there is one of the greats in all motorsports from Charlotte, North Carolina, Paul Norman, and the All-Pro Auto Parts War Wagon. Now, Paul's going to be the test puller here at the Omni. The test puller determines only by the luck of the draw, and on this track, you do not want to draw number one. Everybody's watching him a little bit lighter on the nose. The horsepower's there. The wheel speed's there. Norman's going to be close. Watch the white line to follow the sled. Close, but no cigar as far as a full pull. On a 190 track, what does he go, Scott? Just short. 188.72, 190 feet to full pull. We'll watch it again. Norman's just a bit short, but we're getting the word that Paul Norman is going to accept that pull and not drop and come back. We'll see if it works for him. Oh, looking good out there. You're on top of the thing. You're going to keep that pull. Oh, yeah, we're going to keep the 
Anderson here at the Roanoke Civic Center. We lost Thunder Chicken and Whiskey Business, both of them facing some bad mechanical problems. But we're still going to have some great competition because our first matchup is going to be Awesome Tom, who has definitely been awesome here in Roanoke, going against the Buffalo Trimmer. Our next pairing brings back our third fast loser, that being Bennett Clark and the Pink and White Clydesdale Machine, head to head against USA One, who had a nasty spill last week here in Roanoke. Our next matchup places Mad Dog head to head against Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger, who comes back as the second fast loser. Rounding out the quarterfinal competition is going to be Mike Wine and the Equalizer head to head against Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher. Last week's winner, and we'll see if he can do it again here on Tough Track. Mark Chris and really hits you funny when she says Mike Wine and the Equalizer, but again, we'll see Mike taking over for David Morris again a little later. It's Buffalo Tremor, Johnny Kwasniewski, head to head with Steve Payne and Awesome Paul. Morris, as we documented earlier, has walked away from Gary Cook and the Equalizer. 
and I think Porter's got a definite advantage. No matter who wins this round of elimination, the equalizer is going to be the big winner because he's picking up points, and he's running him hard. Now, Gary Porter had to go real hard right there just to stay ahead of Wine, and that was only the second time Mike Wine had driven the truck. Jerry Cook. Gary, you had the high hand for about a year and a half here. We kind of look like it wasn't going to work out for you today. Then this new driver comes into the picture. You're walking around here like a, a Cheshire cat. You got a grin from, from ear to ear. Hey, just to get the thing back running after what we went through the last two nights, that's as good as winning a race. But we won our own race just in getting the vehicle back out here. He's running without a front shaft, so he can't run flat out. The truck's not in any condition, too. We're just tickled to death to have the truck back out running. How about Mike? He's doing a real good job for you. He's listening to you and just... But he, he, he's doing, you know, you couldn't ask for any better. He keeps going round after round after round, and he's got to be helping for this World Championship points deal. Yes, this, this is the reason we worked so hard this morning to get the truck back out. We'd like to have another championship. Let's look at the replay one more time, and what crusher left of this free. Look at how high he goes. Chris Chapman has found Jerry Porter in the pit. Let's see what Porter's got to say. Gary Porter just jumping out of the Carolina Crusher. Seemed to be having some problems there, Gary. Hey, I'm the radiator. Got a little leak in it. I'm losing a lot of water. The truck's running warm on me. Plus, I have a bearing going bad in the transfer case, and I'm trying to get outside as fast as I can to check over everything to hope I can come back. We'll let you get back to work. Okay, thank you. Coming up next, the pull-off on the TNT All-American Pulling Series, then the Monster Truck Semifinal. It's all here on Top Track. Virginia Farmer first up. Yeah, he's going to be backing up. He'll make that shot using Chevrolet for horsepower. We got two Chevrolet tractors in a pull off and two hybrid engine tractors. Who's going to take the big win in Hot Atlanta? We're going to find out right now, Scott. The first of four to pull off with a heavier sled on a 190 foot track. And Carlton trying to see how far he can go. A lot of oil coming out of the engine closer to the camera, and the front engine. 152 feet for John Carlton's Virginia Farmer. Man, oh man, let's watch it again. And watch specifically the end of the run. Yeah, now look at the engine. Okay, the engine left side, you can see the oil starting to come out. That engine goes away. Now when he stops, the front motor goes away. So Carlton spent a whole lot of money right there for 150 some odd feet. Tim Engler's Mission Impossible. Now we'll try to take the lead. Here's the defending national champion. A lot of people familiar with this tractor, they see it on the Fram Automotive Park commercial all over the country because he is one of the bad boys of the sport. That's why, right there, the white line indicated the lead distance. New leader, it'll go to Princeton, Indiana with a 161. You can draw a new white line across that track as Tim Engler, dirt all Here's the pull one more time, and Engler with a good strong run with a much heavier and quicker moving sled takes it past the line of John Carlson. Your new leader, Tim Engler's Mission Impossible, Army Armstrong's going to talk to him. Tim Engler, you got the hot hand right now, read 161.06, is that going to be good enough? I don't know, we had tractor wanted to go to the right for a change, we had a lot of weight on the left side that time, and it's uh, one of those things we're going to wait and see. We got two fine tractors back there yet to run, and we felt like we had to run light on the front to get as far as we could, so we'll wait and see. I, I'm fairly pleased with my run. Mike Piper just said, sir, you know, Army, when you watch the Daytona 500 NASCAR races, you always see Therese Earnhardt and Stevie Waltrip doing different things to help their driver husbands out. Well, here, Mike Piper's wife actually is a crew chief on just that, sir. Yeah, she's a very active part of this crew. one bullet. Piper not going to catch him shy at a 158. Not quite enough. It's good enough for second place right now for Mike Piper and just add dirt. Of course, he was about that short of Tim Engler to win the national championship a year ago. As we watch Piper once again pull it down the track, you'll see him fall just short of that white line. Well, Army Armstrong's going to talk the full half of the just add dirt team. Barbara 
be all going 158, nothing to be ashamed of, but the rule of thumb in this sport is every time you take the brake, it costs you about 10 feet. Oh, yeah. Looks like he tagged it all the way down. It had to really hurt. Yeah, it did. It cost us some, but that's a good run. I mean, it was a good pull, and thank, I, hopefully it's all still there. That's going to be the main thing. It didn't look like he did any damage to the engine. Let's get Mike down here now. Mike, we were just talking to your lovely wife. You said every time you take that brake, it cost you about 10 feet, and you tagged it a bunch coming down through there. Well, it's starting to leave me right again. I don't know what's wrong with the rear end, but I counted my weight on account of the torque, and I moved the weights in to kind of compensate for it. It's still wanting to go right here, and I don't understand it, because generally the tractor with the motors all in line, twisted the frame, and all want to set the right tire and turn your left. Hey, Scott, he just brought up something real interesting. Engler said exactly the same thing. They cannot figure out what's making these tractors go to the right or want to go to the right. They have to keep driving them to the left. Walls does not know that. Let's see if the same thing happens to him because he lines up on the right side of the track. Now, you'll remember his earlier run, he almost went out of bounds to the left. There comes Walt. He's pointing it that way again and coming across the track. And he's going to win it. Oh, what a run. Fantastic. Dave Walt and the Irish Challenger. 163 and change just short of 164 feet. That takes the victory. We'll watch him again. And I'll tell you, it's got to be something that Dave Walsh likes. But you can tell he knew right where that white line was, and he knew he had enough to get the victory just by that reaction. The Irish challenger, Dave Walsh, has been hot as a firecracker the last half of 89 and now starting 1990. And it's a big, big win anytime you come to the Omni. The Irish challenger, your winner. Angler finishes second. Piper and just adds her third. The Virginia Farmer fourth. And Paul Norman's war wagon rounds out the top five. Here's Army with your winner, Dave Walsh. Well, when the pull off started in Atlanta, we said it's going to be like a poker game. Everybody had to lay their cards on the table. And the guy holding the best hand won it. The last hand to go down, and the people went nuts. And I believe you're kind of pumped over this thing, too. Well, I just love it. I got three engines. A new rule came out this year, letting these heavy guys run four, which is getting an advantage. But whenever I can beat them, it's a, real, it's a great thrill to beat four seven. Sum up the Atlanta full force. It's, it's been a great night for Pullet. Well, it's been great all night. It's great to be here. It's a good track, and uh, all your top competitors, competitors are here, and it's just great. You're only one first place check, son. That's going to you. Congratulations. Thank you, honey. Your winner, Dave Walsh. Well, we see somebody's cards are laid on the table, as my buddy Army would say. Who's holding the best hand in monster truck racing, though? That's the question, and we're about to get the answer as the semifinals come your way.
Virginia. Great city for you as far as points goes. You got one win here last week. You're going to the final today with this kid out of Texas. But I will be real up front with you. He is not afraid of it. He thinks this is going to be his first win of the year. He's running very strong and uh, the points. I got a real slow start off first of the year and this weekend the points leaders that was in front of me have had some bad luck and I've moved up, you know, a lot in points this weekend. Okay, speaking of moving, I'll tell you something you don't know. You're going to be moving to the other side of that track. He's not going to let you get back in the lane you want. Were you aware of that? Yeah, I was qualifying in the left lane, and I got second qualifier, and uh, I think I've ran it enough that I can take the win. Right. 